It's critical, definitely now, with the economy being the way it is now, that uh, we really pay more attention to where our dollars go. And I'm speaking mm. more specifically to uh, communities of color, African Americans, and other minorities where our dollars are spent. And I recently read about the situation in the Chicago suburb of the two affluent African Americans who were coming a little under fire because they had determined that they were going to spend their dollars in their own communities. And they mm. live in multi million dollar homes. Uh, they obviously work for great companies in corporate America, but they purposed that they were going to travel no matter how long it took them or how far it was, initially for a month, but it ended up being an entire year, entire year. to franchise, to spend their dollars in black franchises. And so I sort of wanted to just address that with our panel today, with you guys, right. sort of to get your feeling. Do you feel it's imperative that, you know, as people of color, that we go into our stores and spend our dollars in our stores. Why don't I start with you, Lori? Yeah, I think it. I think it was a wonderful idea. Not only because of the fact that they were able to go and spend their money within their communities, but also they were. Able, I think the the, the woman mm -hmm. that she mentioned that she also had some stereotypes in terms of buying clothing mm, and yes. black own businesses and then she went there and saw that they have the same clothing that she'd normally buy in other stores that are white owned and um and she realized that I really have a misconception about my own people. So I mean, a lot of people, and I know we've had some problems here, even in New York City, where people were trying to black-owned individual, black individuals were trying to start vegetable stands. But there's this preconceived notion that only Asian vegetable stands are going to have fresh vegetables, and so those those businesses would go out of business because they go down the block to the Asian store. So it's it's something that we really have to consider. I think one of the major things that needs to be done is we need to develop a base of black-owned businesses and not just, you know, the black book or, or, or things like that, but we need to have a network verbally mm -hmm. where people know of all of the black-owned businesses, even if there's a sticker on the door or something of that nature, so that you may not have to travel long distance if you're right. aware that there are certain businesses that you want to patronize in your community. Well, I mean, I think the idea is, is wonderful, especially since the stuff that you're doing is trying to create black businesses in Absolutely. terms of what you do as an organization. I think the problem has been, at least for me, is I'm just not aware where the businesses are located at. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and, and unfortunately, as Lo me and Lori always talked about, that whenever we heard anything about a black business, it was always something very negative. So, I mean, um, again, I was thinking about, well, Lori even made a point, I think a couple of years ago, she said that even if the first experience is negative, we should at least be trying to go back to those people to see if they can get the, the situation right. Because even if it's a white business or if it's an Asian business or if it's a, whatever type of person is running the business, sometimes they make mistakes or whatever. So, I mean, are, are we willing to really give people that chance in our own communities to, to, to spend our dollar there? And the more pool that you have of types of businesses, if you go there, if there's good and bad business people in every industry, in every um, cultural group, if you go to one that's bad, you should be able to go to the next one that's good. You can exercise your right to have proper service, but I do think we need to identify these businesses so that we can give them a chance. And there are actually publications which list minority businesses, and actually there is one uh, here in the New York City area that highlights minority owned businesses, whether it's automobile dealerships, clothing distributors. And I think part of the problem that I want to talk just briefly about mm. is the psychological dynamic that mm. we have sort of placed on understanding black business. And, and even in my case, and I, I do teach people how to establish successful businesses, and there's always seems to be an issue in our communities with really grasping you know, how to really do that um, effectively. And we really need to understand that we have to change our mindsets because we have been taught to sort of be workers and not owners or leaders in the business community. And so one way of being a leader is establishing your own business. The, the alarming statistics, 2.5% of all of the 5.3 million uh, or so small businesses in this country are, are, are mm. a small percentage are African American or minority businesses. That's outrageous. Um, so we do need to put more emphasis on establishing our own businesses. So I definitely think we need to get more word out about these types of publications. Have you ever felt that when you've gone into a small, a small business that may have been African American that there was a quality issue? I want to put that out to you guys. Well, you want, to, you want to start? Yeah, I just want to mention that, I mean, I have patronized a lot of black-owned businesses that I think are really good. The, the, the problem, I think, with the just the publication situation is that a lot of us don't even look in the yellow pages before we go shopping. I, I would want something that identifies them, even a sticker on their door or something. I think there was a, um, a black uh, a network or 
if you were buying hair care products, mm -hmm. there was a sig um, um, some sort of symbol mm -hmm. that let you know that it was a black owned business. And that's what you need. If you're walking down the street and you say, I want to buy, you know, toiletries and you see a sticker and then you know to go into that store. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that that will at least advance the progress of the, the, the program. When we, we talk about black business because it's not just about supporting the black business because the black business supports the community. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's what we miss because we traditionally look at some, some of the Asian markets. Generally, you don't see people of color working in them. They're right. generally members of their own community. And one of the, the things that we see generally in minority uh, small business, they do reach out to hire other minorities whereas in some of the other uh, minorities outside of the African-American communities do not do so. So it, it is important that we do invest back into those stores. I think, you know, sometimes we do have to go the extra mile, whether it's a sticker or not. We do have to go online. We do have to research. It's incumbent upon us as members of our community to really understand the importance of our black dollar, um, largely because we are spenders. And so a lot of us spend a lot of money, and why not have that dollar circumvent back into our communities where we can help schools in the community, help give a young high school student a summer job within our own communities, and be able to support one another. I think it's very important that we do so.